Good morning, everyone. Uh, so today uh, I would like to give a talk on an ODF community website, which I've been developing. And I've been doing that as part of my role as a government employee for the Dutch government. I work at the Ministry of the Interior. Um, and there I work in the group where we have uh, the list of standards. Um, actually, we have two departments. One which curates a list of standards to use, and another group which also works to maintain standards. I'm in a group that maintains some standards, and I'm responsible for ODF. So the Dutch government is officially involved uh, in ODF development because we think it's very important to have a standard uh, for editable documents. So a community site. It's in development, so I'm going to show you some of the features of the site as we, that, we're, that we're currently developing. Um, I'm open to input if you have ideas on what we should have there. It's uh, a follow-up to an existing site, and it focuses today mainly on how to do testing of compliance to ODF. So the Dutch government has an ambition, and it's a pretty, uh, pretty heavy ambition. It's to be, uh, do communication with its citizens completely digital uh, next year. So. That'll be a challenge. So I don't guess we're going to do that uh, all the way, but we're going to get quite far. Uh, many people are already doing lots of communication with the government in a digital form. Uh, the most complicated example, I think, is the tax returns. Tax returns are done via a website uh, where you can fill in everything. And actually, when you go to the site, the government already has talked to your bank so, and has talked to your employer. So they fill in all the data. Uh, for a large part already. And uh, so that's an example of doing quite a lot of uh, complicated digital stuff by the government. Now, if we're going to talk digitally, where before we did analog conversation, um, there's uh, an issue coming up. If you do analog communication, you uh, use normal language. You write your language, and you write letters to each other, you talk to each other. But uh, when you go to the digital world, there's an intermediate, and that's your computer, and then the internet, and then the server. And uh, the communication there is very much more complicated. Normal users don't understand it, so they rely on the technical people to write good software, which ensures that this whole process goes smoothly. Um, as you can see, first we had just Dutch, and now we have this whole long list of standards, which all have to work fine for the citizen to have a good experience. Now, this long list, for a large part, is uh, in use for more than 20 years. So a lot of issues have been solved there. But there are quite some standards which still need to improve. Um, the, we maintain a list of standards that we think uh, the Dutch government should use. Many governments have this list, a similar list. Uh, and we work with other, other countries to uh, sort of agree on the list so that even between governments, between countries, we can uh, use the same standards to communicate. And it's important to, to, that, that we also test that the standards actually are working properly in all the software. This is uh, a series of pictures from, uh, well, let's say 10 years ago by now, uh, how uh, HTML was working, and it was working very bad in all the, all the internet browsers. There was very little agreement on how to render a simple image. Actually, this is not a simple image. This is a fairly, fairly heavy test of, uh, of an HTML document, and that's why you see so many errors here. But uh, yeah, it was at, at, in a time when this was all very difficult for browsers, and these days it's much better. So m many browsers get a 100-100 score uh, for this type of tests. And uh, in, in, the, in the web, we're in a very good position right now. The web is still in development, so new features will not always be supported well on, on all the browsers. But uh, the features, which are like 10 years old, they, they, they always work pretty good in modern browsers. Now, on the office, uh, in the office area, it's more complicated because there you're also writing files. So I could be creating a file in LibreOffice, send it to somebody who uses Google Docs. He could be sending it to somebody using Microsoft Office or a different uh, piece of software. So uh, data is read, written, read, written. And then you come into a situation where you have like a gossip chain. You have a number of people sending in a line, 
and I have a nice uh, fact. I tell it to the first guy. He repeats it back and back and back. And then at the end, the message that I sent along the line is probably completely transformed in something totally relate, unrelated. And this is a situation which we face in Office documents right now because interoperability is not perfect. So that's why we have ODF Plugfests. Um, we come together and we see how good the interoperability is. And we discover a lot of interesting things. This uh, is uh, the last Plugfest we had last year in the, in the Netherlands. It was hosted uh, by the government. Here's an example of something that can go wrong. Um, a document which has a text H, uh, a header, in LibreOffice, in, it's read by Microsoft Office and saved back again, can sometimes be transformed into a simple paragraph. Now that's not layout, that's really the information inside the document, which a normal user might not see at first, but it's a very serious thing in my opinion. So this is the kind of things that we have to still weed out and fix. How did we, how did we go about working? Well, we uh, would come together at one location with a laptop, and then we would go to a website to see what we're gonna do, and it would say something like, open a text document, write hello, save it back, uh, and open it in a different program, and see if the result is good. And when you've uh, found uh, if it's good or bad, you write that down in a wiki site. So we all had to come together for that, and it's a bit inefficient. So at the last Plugfest, we uh, used a different methodology, which was to use automatic testing. Um, I, we created a lot of tests beforehand with small features of the ODF specification. So italic fonts, bold fonts, a table, one column, two column, um, header, footer, all these things were isolated in small, uh, small files so that we could very quickly see if a feature was supported or not. Um, then we uh, open these files and save them again in all the different applications and uh, summarized what we found, if the feature was still present in all the files. And then at the Plugfest itself, we had all this data available and we simply sat in groups and looked through all the issues that, we, uh, that were uh, determined by the software to check if it's actually an interoperability issue or just a problem with the test. Now, all the results of those uh, two days were collected in a report. Um, yeah, this is a bit of a technical detail of how the tests look inside, but I'll, I'll skip that for now. Um, this is what, 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 uh, how, the, how the summaries look like. So uh, this was a test to see if, uh, we, if all the office suites support to have a wavy line through a, a text. Uh, so you see first uh, Caligra uh, shows uh, correctly uh, a wavy line through the Hello World. And um, the green boxes uh, show that this feature was loaded and saved back correctly. So the style uh, properties were the same after loading and saving. Then the second uh, implementation, Google Docs, actually loses the information about this styling and you can see in the picture that there's no wavy line. Um, then we go to Abbey Word, Web ODF, LibreOffice, Microsoft Office, and you can see quite some differences in these implementations. Most of them remember the fact that there should be a line through the word, but not everybody supports that it's a wavy line. So yeah, this is one of the issues that we found. And uh, what we did with those is we just wrote it down and uh, every feature got its own small paragraph. This was a paragraph uh, for the, uh, the borders uh, around paragraphs. And we found some issues here in Google Docs, AB Word, and Web ODF. Now, this whole report was quite long, and it's available online. Um, and we send it to all the implementers so that they can help uh, improve things. But it was just a fixed document, um, and we just hope that they will take action. Here's the conclusions. Well, we found some numbers. Um, we didn't cover all of the specifications, so these numbers are not entirely meaningful. Uh, although, I mean, the general trend um, is that uh, LibreOffice uh, is quite good compared to other implementations in the styling area. Yeah, 
Um, another issue came up uh, this week about uh, how to deal with cloud software. And um, in general, I'm skeptical about using clouds. But for uh, doing the testing process, uh, I, I kind of like it. So we are now building a, uh, a website hosted by Open Doc Society. So it's their computer where this software is running, where we will be doing the testing online. We uh, spent the, some time during the last plug fest to uh, come up with a nice design of how this all should work. And doing it for a website is quite complicated, but we have something to show you today. And um, yeah, so here is a, a list of uh, features that we have now in the site and which we want to have in the future for the site. So the most simple feature is that people coming to the site can upload a document, and then the document will be opened in a number of different office suites, and you can compare what the document looks like. And I'll show you a nice uh, live demo of that in a couple of minutes where you can see that it's quite interactive how that works. We will validate the document. You can browse the contents. Uh, an ODF file is just a zip container. Uh, most people don't realize that, but if you upload a file to our website, you can, look at, you can look inside at all the images in the zip container. You can click on the XML files and look in there. So that's uh, even normal users um, quickly get a feeling of what ODF actually looks like on the inside. Um, the most important feature, in my opinion, is that we're going to create tests online. So the XML uh, example you saw earlier, that will have a, we have a page where you can create those online. So if you have a part of the specification which you, will, you would like to investigate automatically, you can write a small test there, and uh, we will keep track of it and run it uh, for you. And when there is new ODF software, the test will be run again, and we'll keep, keep track of how good all the software uh, implements this particular feature. Um, we will also have a wiki um, so that you can uh, add information to the site. It's supposed to be a community site, so if you have uh, interesting, interesting things to say about ODF, for example, a list of uh, software which you think is interesting for a particular feature or best practices on using ODF in your own language, you can add it there. Uh, this is still in progress, so it's not, not a fluid experience right now. But if you want to test it out and give feedback on that, you're more than welcome. You do need to make an, an account for that. Um, and uh, by the way, you can see the URL of the beta website is still in development here below. So if my talk speech is uh, boring, you can already go here and play around. <laughs> yeah, what we also want is a live scoreboard. So if you have all these tests, you can sum up and say, OK, for styling, what is the score for this application? Uh, and if you have uh, tables, for example, they are important in your workflow. You can also have a score for that. Or you can have an overall score. And that's important because um, governments and companies would like to buy software or develop software or uh, go to websites with particular software that supports ODF. But when a company says they support ODF, it's very hard to see how well they support it. There is no uh, good data available on that. And one of the big goals of this site is to create that information and collect it and keep track of it so that we can have a very good view on the ODF landscape, on the ODF software landscape to see how good is every software and I hope that by making this information public and easily visible to everybody, that on the one hand, people buying the software will choose software that can handle the standard well, and that developers of software will be motivated to improve the uh, support for ODF in their website or in their software. Yeah, and um, LibreOffice has a public bug database, but not all, pro not all projects have that. So when we discover uh, a bug in a software which doesn't have a public bug database, we still would like to keep track of the progress of this bug. So we, we're also going to add a public bug tracker, so a third-party bug tracker for projects which don't have a public one. And maybe we'll also make that available to the ones which do have it. But then it'll be mostly just a link to their website. Yeah, uploading documents. This is actually. Uh, a a follow-up of uh, a website you might know already called Office Shots. 
where you can also upload your document and see what it looks like in different office suites. But we've improved the UI. We made it more easy to use. And uh, it, it looks like this. So here's an example where I uploaded a uh, document celebrating 20 years of KDE. This was actually last weekend. And um, I've opened this in Microsoft Word and in Google Docs. And you can see that the fonts are shifted a bit. The image is shifted a bit. Um, yeah, the line down the middle is uh, the difference between one uh, office suite and the other office suite. Now, I'll also try to show this live to you. Uh, if you are on this website yourself, you can go to examples. And then here you see a whole list of documents. And, well, this is perhaps an interesting one. Here uh, we see Google Docs and LibreOffice Writer. And you can move your mouse and just see uh, what the differences are in rendering. And you can say, okay, now I want to compare Google Docs to Caligra. And voila, you can also do that. So this is just to get a feel of what's wrong, right? This is not uh, a thorough analysis like what Milos was showing yesterday, right? It's not so advanced, but this is just to, for people to have a quick, quick feel of what is going on. And there are plenty of bugs which will show dramatic differences here. And that will help people to see, okay, this feature that I'm using is not uh, widely supported, so maybe I shouldn't use it. If you're developing a template for your organization, you can check quickly if the template works across uh, Office Suites. So I think it's simple, it's uh, nice, nicely uh, visual, uh, and that, that is a nice low entry point for comparing uh, how the Office Suites work. Yeah, so that's one feature. Now the other feature is writing the tests. Uh, the tests, to write a test, you have to write a bit of ODF. ODF is a large, large specification. Many, many different elements, many different attributes. So what we've done is we have developed a, uh, a web plugin uh, where you can write ODF, and we have auto-completion there. So if you don't remember a tag, you can just uh, press Control Space or you type, and then this pop-up will show, and you say, ah, yes, in a, in a text P, I can have a span, for example. So it knows where you are in, the, in your document, and this should help writing uh, fragments of ODF. And if you're writing something which is invalid, you will get an error message. So we've also implemented a validator in there. Of course, I realize this is quite technical, but the people who do know how to do this, I hope they get enthusiastic about this, and uh, we'll start hel helping writing tests. Uh, oh, spelling error, sorry. Uh, this is what you get when you then run this test. So this is a similar view to what we had before, right? But that was a static document which we created once, and this is live updated. So when a new software comes in, uh, this test is run again, and the results are there for your Office Suite. So if you are testing LibreOffice and you have a new build every day, you could even uh, do it, use, use this for that. Although I would then prefer that you have a separate instance for yourself where you do nightly builds, and then when you have a dot, a dot something release, then we can hook it up here to have public results. But if you want to internally also use this tool, it's perfectly okay. We, the software is, is free software, so you can use it yourself. And uh, you can click on the screenshots below. You can get the PDF which was created. You can just quickly go into the content XML or the styles XML. You can see if there were validation errors. And of course, the green and red boxes help to make it all nice and visual. And this will then result in a live scoreboard. This is just uh, a graphic from, from an ODF document, but uh, this will be a live website. But we don't have that yet. We're working on that. OK, some technical parts. Maybe I should quickly say how all of this works internally. So it's a website with a SQL database. Uh, it's written in Haskell. And yesterday, I heard that there are some Haskell fans here uh, this weekend. So. I see that one over there, and some other people were clapping yesterday, so I hope that I can get some contributions on the server side for this. But uh, the most important thing is that you can connect with your ODF software to our site, and that is done via a simple HTTPS interface where you can receive and send JSON messages. Um, the format is not yet, well, it is somehow documented, uh, but this needs to improve on the website as well. Uh, uh, yeah, so the, the, the actual documentation of how to talk to our server to hook up your software uh, is going gonna, is gonna to be there, but everybody can basically hook up their own ODF software, yes? Yeah, 
this mic? Um, yeah, I'll, le I'll let you repeat the question in the microphone so the audience at home can enjoy uh, the question as well. My question is when you want to set up the, the open document format testing site yourself, do you also have to use the Haskell based web server or whether you can also use Nginx for example? Uh, no, the, so the web server, is, it doesn't use Apache or anything, it's just one binary. So you compile it and you run it. So you don't have to hook it up to anything, it's its, its own HTTP s server. You can run it locally. You can just uh, compile it and run it, and then it's available on local host. Yeah, but if you already run a web server, do you can reuse it for that, or do yeah. you need to also run it in the Haskell-based thing? Um, you you need you, to have, have the ability to, to run a, uh, any executable on your server, and then with Apache redirect rules, so you can you hook it up. So you basically can proxy to the Haskell-based web server and yes. use that. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah, and then there is the editor. Um, if you're interested in the details of how this editor works, it's Code Mirror, which is a very famous uh, project for doing uh, coding in the browser, and we've written a plugin for that. And uh, those, this code is available on the URLs, which you can see here. Okay, so I, I, I hope that this site can be in, uh, a, a site for all audiences. Uh, normal users should be able to get avail information about the, informa the available software, and uh, I guess LibreOffice will be very prominent because it's, it's very nice ODF software. I hope that the site will be attractive for policymakers so they can make well-informed decisions about what software to use in their organization if they care about standards and longevity of their data. And it should be a tool for software developers to be motivated about improving their software for ODF and figuring out how to actually do that, to see what are the differences with other software uh, and how can I fix it if the problem is on my side. So you can contribute to the site, of course. Well, the simplest thing you can do is just try it out. Just go to beta.opendocumentformat.org, click around a bit, if you see any issues, you can report them uh, in, the, in the bug database or you can send me a mail. Um, that would be a fantastic thing to do. Or you could become a partner of the website. You could say, we, uh, we are using it. We are helping to support it simply by being interested, maybe contributing code or content on the wiki. Uh, that's the lowest, well, after testing, that's the easiest thing to, to help with. And uh, if you're really into ODF, then you can help us write tests and uh, maybe if you develop ODF software, can you, you can provide uh, a document converter so that your software is tested on our site. So, thank you very much. Uh, here's the URL once more. Um, if you want, I can click around a bit more on the website to show some features. If you have already uploaded a document, upload a document during this talk, uh, oh, actually, I can actually have a look. When, what, what was the latest document? No, nobody has uploaded the document yet. So if somebody feels the challenge, you can try to upload a document during the questions and I will show it up here. Other questions? Yes. Is it only for open document or, or also for Microsoft formats? Um, well, I, since Microsoft also supports ODF, I, could, I, I think we can also call that a Microsoft supported format, but it's not a Microsoft originating format, and we don't support those at the moment, and we don't have intention on our side to develop it, but it will be fairly easy to edit. Okay. More questions? Oh, everybody's busy uploading files. I can show you uh, one more example. For example, the template we have today. I uploaded that one as well. Um, so this is the template for our conference. And this is Google Docs and Caligra. And uh, you can see it's kind of okay. Unfortunately, the bullet points are not supported by Google here. Yeah, and uh, the, the text in the bottom line, the, the, the tag is gone. And 
Actually, the whole skyline of Bono is uh, gone in Caligua. I don't know if they have a particular dislike of Bono or anything, but uh, <laughs> there's no Bono in the Caligua uh, version of this document, unfortunately. And if I go to page two, yeah, you can see still some font differences here. There's, oh, this is a weird, uh, weird thing here. Some images not supported on Google Docs. Yeah, yeah. But how does LibreOffice do it itself? I guess the person who created this did so in LibreOffice, so we can t say that that is the reference here. Uh, yeah, so there that we have an image for LibreOffice. Yeah, let's try those. So the, ah, the, the font is uh, very similar. It's just a pixel shift, I guess. And the icon is slightly smaller here, the bullet point, which is a bit weird. And the, so the first slide, yeah, there's still no Bono. Um, Yeah. Uh, what is the expected interface for one of the implementations that uh, could be tested? Yeah, so if, your if you want to hook up your impl uh, uh, implementation, basically it's a JSON interface over HTTP. So you have a software and it asks our server, hello, I uh, can do stuff with ODF and I support ODF, uh, ODT and ODP, for example. And I can convert it back to ODP and I can convert it to PDF. So you list what you can do in a, in a JSON message and then you, you uh, get a message back saying, ah, you can do this for me. Uh, for example, convert this document to PDF and then you upload it back via the JSON interface. And you can show the nice pictures only if there's some PDF export. Yes. Yeah. But the testing, so the, the testing if the ODF features are retained, that you can do if you save back ODF. And then that's the stuff that will go into the, to the, to the scoreboard because we don't uh, have uh, visual uh, testing yet. That's also planned, but first we want to uh, make the, uh, just the XML level testing uh, better. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>